Does this work? Okay. Yes. All right. Awesome. Okay. So a little over a year ago, I didn't know how to code at all. And today, I work as a software engineer at Verve. My name is Shana Moore, and excuse me. <laughs> my name is Shana Moore, and I'm here to share my story about how I made a career transition into software development, even without a technical degree. But first, thank you all for coming here today. I'm super excited about this opportunity. So a little bit of background information about myself. I graduated from college in 2009 with degrees in human development and Spanish literature. But unfortunately, in America, we were undergoing a huge recession at the time, which meant that it was extremely difficult to find a job. So I basically just took whatever I could get, which ended up being in administrative support. And there, I remained pretty much complacent for the past seven years of my life. So no, it wasn't my dream career, but I don't regret it because this is when I accidentally discovered the power of code. So for instance, when I found out that you could automate processes that would literally take all day when done manually, I was instantly hooked and interested. And then as Liam, um, as Liam suggested or told you about, I became interested in web development as a result of my YouTube channel, which has always just been a hobby. And I was interested in creating a website from scratch. And that's when I started teaching myself HTML, CSS, and JavaScript to build, basically build a website that would complement my channel. Excuse me. So as you can see, I started to develop an interest in code during this time, which was perfect because I ended up getting laid off from my job. And that was also a blessing in disguise because that was really the time where I was put in an uncomfortable situation that forced me to basically get my life together and ultimately that changed my career. So as I tell my story today, I will, offer, I will be offering six tips that hopefully will inspire you or anyone who's interested in making a similar career change as well. So the first thing that I did when I was interested in code, I still didn't know anything yet. I immediately put myself out into the community and the Ruby community has been amazing. So the first picture, it's a little bit blurry, I, I apologize for that, but the first picture, you can see me standing with a group at Rails, Rails Camp. And this is the Rails Camp in California. So the fact that Rails Camp is all over here is amazing. And if you haven't gone, I highly recommend you check it out because I had an amazing time. But I was really lucky because when I started to develop an interest in code, I actually had a neighbor who was a Ruby developer and also the organizer of Rails Camp West. And she invited me to this camp and I, just accept it for whatever reason. <laughs> but it ended up being like the best time and I met amazing people. It was the first time I met developers from all over the world and I got to hear their stories and look about like see what projects they were working on and I was so inspired that when I came home I immediately knew that I wanted to learn Ruby. And then in the second photo, hopefully you know who this is. I am at my first RubyConf and posing with Matt, the creator of Ruby himself. And I got, again, I, was, I didn't know code at all during this time. I didn't even really know what Ruby was until Rails Camp. And I applied to the Scholar, um, Scholar Opportunity Program and was able to go to RubyConf in Texas for free as well as get paired with a mentor for that weekend whom I still keep in contact with. So the point of getting involved is that even if you don't feel like you know anything, because clearly I didn't at this time, I've made amazing connections. I've met amazing people, I have great friends that have helped me along this journey. And also this came really in handy when it was time to find a job because of my network which brings me to my second tip, which is to find support. 
And I'll, I guess, kind of gloss over support or different uh, versions of support. And the first I'd like to mention is to find support with um, learning tools. So you should be super honest with yourself on how you like to learn and invest in those tools that will support you. So for me at this time, I was, I had a full-time job and I was also still paying off my first degree. So I wasn't quite willing to quit my job and attend a full-time boot camp in person. And I also wasn't very excited about taking out another loan to go back to a four-year degree for computer science. So for me, I invested in a lot of online tools, uh, such as Learn Verified, Team Treehouse, Code School, Skill Crush, like Lynda.com, you name it. I probably have had a subscription at some point uh, to help me learn. And I also invested in a ton of books and listened to a lot of podcasts, as well as attend like free social media avenues such as Code Newbies. They have Twitter chats and you can participate in that completely free. And then I'd also like to mention the importance of finding support in a community. So for me, I attended basically as many meetup groups as I could until I found my place. So in these pictures, I'm posing with a bunch of women and we are a group called Girl Develop It. And I just immediately felt like home when I attended their meetup group because there is where I found like a place that offered judgment-free support and learning with a diverse group of men and women supporting each other. So to be honest, sometimes as being an African-American woman, it can feel quite isolating at times. Um, going to different tech events and not seeing anyone else who looks like you or sometimes not even even seeing a woman in the room. So when I found Girl Develop It, I definitely felt like home. Now, unfortunately, Girl Develop It is not international, so it's not in Australia yet. Um, but there are similar groups here, such as Women Who Code, or if that doesn't suit you, what's stopping you from creating your own? So. Find, oops, sorry. <laughs> Finding support is extremely important because learning how to code can be very challenging at times, and it's important to have people that you can reach out to when you need it. So speaking about difficulty, if you don't listen to anything else I say and you're trying to learn how to code, the most important tip I have for today is to not give up. So for me, the most important thing I had to do was practice positive thinking, which was literally a chore. And I always explain it as like your best friend is about to run a marathon and he or she has been training for this marathon forever and it's race day. So are you going to get in front of your best friend and tell them how much they suck and tell them they're too slow, they can't run, they should quit, they should give up. And hopefully, if you really are their best friend, the answer is going to be no. So don't talk to yourself that way. The internal dialogue that you have is extremely important. If you tell yourself that you can't do something, guess what? You can't do it. Like, your mind is just that powerful. So to further emphasize this point, I'd like to introduce the dichotomy of a fixed versus growth mindset. And this was offered by studies um, by psychologists from Stanford called Carol Dweck, like decades of studying children. And in her words, in the fixed mindset, when you fail, you're a failure. In the growth mindset, when you fail, you're learning. So this is um, super important because someone that has a fixed mindset, they're more likely or they believe that their talents, intelligence, and abilities are basically fixed traits. You either have them or you don't. So if someone is trying to learn how to code, for example, and they aren't very good, maybe they're just even missing something super simple like a semicolon, but they are so frustrated they, they can't see it. Someone with a fixed mindset are more likely to quit. Someone that has a growth mindset does quite opposite. They are more Willing, willing to accept challenges wholeheartedly and realize that this is part of their growth and journey to learn. So 
the takeaway here is that if you are someone that has, who tends to be on the fixed mindset spectrum, according to her studies, it's not too late for you. <laughs> um, if you have that internal dialogue of a fixed mindset person basically telling you to quit and you suck and to stop, uh, just tell it to go away and try to <laughs> replace it with a growth mindset instead. So realize that you do indeed have a choice and you should choose to think positively. Also, if um, you follow my first two tips, number one and number two, hopefully by now you will have an amazing support system to reach out to if you need additional help. So the fourth tip I have um, is probably the most practical one and it's to build projects and to build a lot of them. And so as a new programmer, I know it feels, it can feel like super overwhelming because there are so many different IDEs and languages and technology and frameworks to choose from. It's quite overwhelming. Uh, since we're at a Ruby convention, you may want to consider Ruby. Um, <laughs> but basically, my suggestion is to pick one and just focus on that one until you become proficient. And once you do that, not only will it help you learn like basic fundamental programming, but bas basically because of that, it will be easier for you to pick up other languages along the way, such as JavaScript or whatever your heart desires. But basically, just get proficient in one language and build projects with that from start to finish and build a lot of projects. Never stop building projects. And when I say finish, you, it, may, it may be in the form of like deploying a website, for example. And this will be great because it'll give you um, experiences of challenges and solutions that you found for those challenges. And that's perfect when it comes to actually when you're ready to find a job because you'll be able to speak about your code and also show off like real working projects that you've built. Okay, um, my fifth tip is to be different, stand out. So it's important, of course, to always be yourself no matter what, but also uh, try to, I guess, don't be afraid to go above and beyond and be creative to basically set yourself out from the crowd. So. For instance, you could start blogging, you could blog once a week, and that's always great because not only are you reinforcing what you're learning, but you're also giving that information back to the community. And true story, I once was offered a job interview as a result of my blog post. Uh, something else that you could do, so say that you're in job interview mode right now and you're doing a lot of whiteboarding challenges, and trust me, I didn't do great on probably most of them. Instead of going home and just swallowing in your self-pity and saying, you know, that fixed mindset, you're dumb, you should quit, take those challenges and keep working on them. So after I had an interview, not only would I send my interviewer a thank you note, but I would also send them the solution to those code challenges. And as a result, this is um, one of the examples, responses I got, so no, I didn't, um, get hired at this place, but they were offered, or they were willing to open an opportunity to intern with them instead. As a result of my enthusiasm and passion and just drive. So I highly recommend doing that. And then for the last tip here, at the place that I actually got hired at, I leveraged my YouTube skills and made a, a video, a screencast, going through the code challenge Going through my code challenge, I explained line by line what I did and the reasons why I did them. And the person I submitted it to was so excited, he said no one had ever done that before. And yeah, it was, it was just very well received. But my only disclaimer here is that if you do make a video, make sure you put it on private because companies don't appreciate their code challenges being broadcasted to the world. Okay. <laughs> And my last tip is to not forget to pay it forward. So you could do this in many ways as well, such as sharing your story, which helps to inspire and encourage other people who, you know, are maybe interested, but for whatever reasons are afraid to take the plunge. So 
it's important to share your story with whoever will listen. Uh, you could also volunteer and teach or mentor, which is a win-win situation because not only are you helping other people learn and um, achieve their goals, but you're also reinforcing what you're learning, and you could also use such activities for your resume, for instance. Or you could volunteer to give talks, which is a great way to network because someone always wants to talk to you when you're done. And you could get invited to amazing opportunities such as traveling halfway around the world to speak at RubyConf Australia. <laughs> and the best part about this experience for me, which is something I never thought I would ever do, is I get to experience this with my mom. She's sitting right there. <laughs> <laughs> and the last thing um, that I'm personally doing is, as Liam mentioned, I am now the co-leader of Girl Develop at San Diego, which is great because not only am I able to extend such opportunities that I received to other people, such as class scholarships and internships to huge tech companies, um, but I'm also feeling like I get to play an active role in changing or contributing to the, di the diversity issue in tech, which is very important to me, and also my YouTube channel. Um, but yeah, okay. <laughs> so as a recap, my tips are from my experience, uh, get involved, find support, don't give up, build stuff, be yourself, pay it forward, and most importantly, don't ever give up. Thank you.